Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, before uh, I take your questions, I'd just like to uh, say to you uh, that the President has made the decision not to release any of the photographs of uh, the deceased Osama bin Laden. And rather than, uh, uh, or rather, first, uh, I will uh, give you the language the President used when he was recently interviewed uh, about an hour ago to explain his decision. Uh, this is in an inter interview with uh, CBS 60 Minutes, Steve Croft. The uh, President was asked, uh, well, he said that uh, they were discussing when bin Laden's body was taken out of the compound, uh, the President was asked about how they knew it was him. And he said, when they landed, we had very strong confirmation at that point that it was him. Photographs had been taken. Facial analysis indicated that, in fact, it was him. We hadn't yet, d yet done DNA testing, but at that point, we were 95 percent sure. Question, did you see the pictures? The President, yes. Question, what was your reaction when you saw them? The President, it was him. Question, why didn't you release them? The President, we discussed this internally. Keep in mind that we are absolutely certain that this was him. We've done DNA sampling and testing, and so there is no doubt that we killed Osama bin Laden. It is important for us to make sure that very graphic photos of somebody who was shot in the head are not floating around as an incitement to additional violence or as a propaganda tool. That's not who we are. We don't trot out this stuff as trophies. The fact of the matter is, this was somebody who was deserving of the, of the justice that he received. And I think Americans and people around the world are glad that he is gone. But we don't need to spike the football. And I think that given the graphic nature of these photos, it would create some national security risk and I've discussed this with Bob Gates and Hillary Clinton and my intelligence teams, and they all agree. Question, there are people in Pakistan, for example, who say, look, this is all a lie. Obama, this is another American trick. Osama is not dead. The President, the truth is that we were monitoring world, that we are monitoring, we were monitoring, rather, worldwide reaction. There is no doubt that Osama, that, that bin Laden is dead. Certainly, there is doubt no doubt among Al-Qaeda members that he is dead. And so we don't think that a photograph in and of itself is going to make any difference. There are going to be some folks who deny it. The fact of the matter is, you will not see bin Laden walking on this earth again. That's the uh, conclusion of the excerpt. And I think it uh, states rather uh, thoroughly why the President made the decision that he did. Uh, with that, I'll take your questions. Thanks. Thanks, Jay. Based on those comments, the President made uh, a very compelling case why not to release the photos. Uh, so what was the internal debate, and was he ever seriously considering releasing photos? Well, uh, obviously the photos didn't exist until bin Laden was killed. So there's not a great deal of time between then and the decision. There are obviously arguments to be made on either side. The fact of the matter is, as the President described, these are graphic photographs of someone who was shot in the face, or the head, rather. And uh, it is not in our national security interests to uh, allow those images, as has been in the past, uh, been the case, to become uh, uh, icons for to, to rally opinion against the United States. The President's number one priority is the safety and security of American citizens at home and Americans abroad. Uh, there is no need to release these photographs to establish Osama bin Laden's identity, uh, and he saw uh, no other compelling reason to release them given the potential for national security risks, and, 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 and further because he believes, as he said so clearly, this is not who we are. So was he, in the, in the time period you're discussing, the moment he had the photos until now that we know the answer, was he grappling with this at all, or was his stand clear and he was just gathering other, uh, uh, other opinions? Well, I, I, I don't know about the evolution of his decision-making process. When I've heard him discuss it, he held this opinion very firmly, uh, and he has held that opinion very firmly. But this is a very short period of time. Uh, obviously, he wanted to hear the opinions of others. 
uh, but he was uh, uh, very clear about his view on this, and obviously uh, his decision is uh, categorical. One other question. Uh, Director Panetta, in one of the interviews he did yesterday, said the government obviously has been talking about how best to do this, but I don't think there's, there was any question that ultimately a photograph would be presented to the public. Well, uh, how do you explain I, What that? I would say is that there are compelling arguments for, in general, the release of information. Uh, and, and, you know, there was a discussion to be had about the pros and cons. And the President engaged in that discussion and made a decision. Uh, the, every member of the national security team is, uh, is aware of and expressed the downside of releasing, which is, uh, I think, weighed heavily on the President. Uh, in terms of the potential risks it would pose to Americans serving abroad uh, and Americans traveling abroad. So uh, the idea that uh, this was 100% uh, obvious, I mean, yeah, that's the, the fact of the matter is the President never gets it to make a decision that's 100% uh, uh, obvious because the, those kind of decisions never get to his desk. Well, that I understand, but I'm saying his, his comment was what there, I was no, there was no question that a photograph release obviously well, that was look, wrong. I, the, the, right. the thing is the President made this decision. Uh, he consulted members of his national security team. Uh, there's reasonable arguments to be made. Uh, the President felt very strongly uh, and uh, made the decision he made. Yes? Jay, you talked yesterday a lot about the firefight. Who was it that was shooting back at the U.S. commandos? Uh, we have, as you know, since the moment this operation became public, uh, been as uh, helpful as we can be to provide as much information as we can. And in terms of the operational details, we have gotten to the point where we cannot cross lines because of the necessity for uh, to preserving the methods and, and operational techniques and, and uh, capabilities of the kinds of forces that were used in this case. Uh, we, we, you know, we, 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 we've gone to the limit of our ability to do that uh, and still maintain some of the things we need to maintain and be kept secret. So uh, that's a long way of uh, beginning my answer to say that We've re we revealed a lot of information. We've been as forthcoming with facts as we can be. A lot of information came out quickly when we needed to clarify some of the information that we had. As more information came in, we provided that. Uh, but in terms of further details of the operation, uh, you know, I'm, I don't have any for you. Uh, you're welcome to obviously uh, consult with the Defense Department about them, but I don't have any more information. I'm not going to discuss uh, beyond what I've said already uh, the uh, the operational details. But some things, as you acknowledged yesterday, have changed as the information came in. Is the fact of a firefight solid? You, you heard the uh, account that I read yesterday, and uh, that is information that I provided, and I'm not, I'm just simply saying I'm not going further than that. Okay. I guess I'm just curious about, you mentioned I'm not going to go further than what I said yesterday, so we can talk about, we can ask a lot about operational details. The the answer to your question is certainly contained within the account I read yesterday, but we're we're at a point where uh, we need to be mindful of the necessity to protect our ability in the future to go after other bad guys, uh, perhaps in the same way we went after this one. And uh, some of the capacities that we have, the methods that we use, uh, need to be protected and not compromise. Yeah. One follow-up question. Are you concerned that the way in which bin Laden was killed and buried at sea might hurt the President's ability to reach out to the Muslim world, as he has tried to over the last two years? The, ma the efforts that were made to give Osama bin Laden an appropriate burial following Islamic precepts and traditions were considerable. However, I would also say that uh, there is nothing, um, the, the respect that was shown to him and his body uh, was far greater than the respect that Osama bin Laden showed to the victims on 9-11 or any of his other victims. Uh, and that's because that's who we are. Uh, so we feel very comfortable with the fact that we 
uh, took uh, extraordinary measures to, to show that respect uh, to the traditions of the Islamic faith. My question is about the president's specific outreach to the Muslim world. How does this I think that you heard the president speak on Sunday evening about the unbelievably important fact to make clear that President Bush made clear before President Obama that there are efforts in the fight against terrorists, against al-Qaeda, are not aimed at Islam, are not aimed at Muslims. And uh, the fact is that the cooperation and assistance provided by Muslims around the world is essential to our fight, and it's not about them. Because Osama bin Laden was not a Muslim leader. He was a mass murderer, a mass murderer of people around the world, including Muslims. Uh, so we, we uh, obviously uh, believe that uh, we were uh, absolutely within our rights to go after the most wanted man in the world, the most wanted terrorist in the world, the man who uh, ordered the attacks on so many Americans and killed so many Americans. And, uh, and we, uh, it needs to be recognized that this is seen as a good thing throughout the world. Uh, and yet, because of who we are, we, we, we took extraordinary measures to, to show the kind of respect uh, that was shown uh, in his burial. Yes, Jay. What do you say to the um, families of the victims of 9-11 and the USS Cole and, and other uh, terrorist acts by al-Qaeda? These family members say they want the photo released so they can have some closure. What's the White House? Well, I, I, I'm not going to go beyond the, the words of the president, and, and I will rephrase them to say that there is no question at all that Osama bin Laden is dead. He will not walk this earth again. We have established beyond any doubt, through DNA evidence, facial recognition, visual recognition, the naming of him by individuals on that compound, that Osama bin Laden was shot and killed on Sunday night. He is dead, and that, I think, Americans uh, feel a great sense of closure because of that. Is there any other, I understand the photographs that are off the table, are, is there any other evidence of his death that might, that you're still considering releasing, the president is still considering releasing, whether the <laughs> video of uh, his burial at sea, whether the DNA evidence, is there anything else uh, that could be released? Well, I, I will simply say that we are, th this decision applies to all visual uh, evidence, um, and in terms of uh, discussions that might be had to go into more detail about how the DNA evidence uh, was uh, uh, analyzed and collected, how the facial recognition uh, evidence was analyzed and collected, and how uh, the experts uh, reached their conclusion that this was, without any shred of doubt, Osama bin Laden. You know, those, I'm sure that uh, information can, you know, might be made available, will be made available. Uh, in the future, but the uh, but this this decision that I cited the president made has to do with the uh, visual evidence, the photographic ed evidence. Uh, and lastly, um, the CIA director uh, Leon Panetta said uh, in a closed door briefing on Capitol Hill um, about the Pakistani government uh, that they either were involved or are incompetent. Uh, is that the position of the White House? I assume you mean by a closed door briefing, classified briefing. I have no comment. <laughs> okay. Jeff. Oh, sorry, yeah. Um, if, uh, I just want to clarify. You said that the president, based on your observations, had always held the position that these photos should not well, be Well, I don't released. know. I just meant that uh, we're, we're now what, two and a half days since this took place. Uh, that uh, I, I know he had this. Uh, I heard him express this view yesterday. Uh, but there was still, he was gathering. Uh, the thoughts and, and views of others uh, on his team. Um, I, so long held is an impossible statement to make since we're only talking about a couple sense of that days. He had made up his mind and wanted just to open it up for opinions to sway him as to whether or not they should be released. The president has a national security team, and he wanted to hear uh, uh, the, the, the opinions of others. Obviously, uh, that's that's how he makes decisions uh, in this White House, and he wants to hear, uh, as he did with the decision to authorize this mission, which I think has been reported was not uh, uh, a decision that uh, every member of his team supported or thought was, you know, that, that people had reservations, obviously, because it was a very risky mission. But he, you know, this is the process that he undertakes because he believes that that's the way uh, he wants his presidency to function. 
He wants uh, the unvarnished opinions and advice and assessments of his, of his top advisors. And in a situation like this, uh, the last thing he wants is a bunch of people telling him what they think he wants to hear. Can you give us a sense of whether or not it was the majority opinion of those who were giving him advice that the photos should not be released? It was a majority opinion, yes. And also, um, can you give us anything more about this uh, team that will be going to, I guess, brief former President Bush? I don't have any information on that. Yes, Chip. Uh, thanks, Jay. Um, I know you said you didn't want to get into operational details, but you kind of opened the but door. But you can on, try. But you kind of opened the door on one thing. You said that he was shot in the face, and then you corrected yourself and said, "Rather the head." Were you saying that he was not shot in the face? No, no. I, I simply, <laughs> I, he was uh, shot above the neck. Let's say that. <laughs> I think we'd rather go with head if we're, if we're given the choice. Mm -hmm. But it, but you're not saying it wasn't. I, I'm not. I, I don't have any details to give you on that. Um, why has the president uh, decided not to speak at Ground Zero tomorrow? The president thinks it's uh, entirely fitting and appropriate to visit the site of uh, Ground Zero uh, in the wake of this significant and cathartic moment for the American people. And he wants to lay a wreath to honor the victims to honor the first responders who so courageously rushed to the scene and in many cases gave their own lives uh, to try to save others, uh, to honor the, honor the spirit of unity of, uh, in America that we all felt in the wake of that terrible attack. Um, I think the power of that uh, requires no words. And uh, he will also meet with uh, families of the victims and, and first responders uh, in private. Was there a and debate it, on whether to speak and uh, to use his expression? Was there concern that it don't, would look like spiking the ball? The president, no, there wasn't a debate, but the president did speak uh, on Sunday night. And a remarkably large audience in this country, a remarkable number of Americans saw him speak uh, because the word traveled so fast about this uh, monumental event that had occurred. Uh, and so, no, there was no debate. Quick question on the New York Times uh, CBS poll. Um, his approval rating jumped 11 points from 46 to 57, but at the same time, his approval on the economy is the lowest ever in this poll, 34 percent. If you could just uh, comment on if you think there's any significance to all that. I think that the country is still uh, emerging from the worst recession since the Great Depression. I think that uh, gas prices have weighed heavily on Americans as they try to make ends meet, and it's entirely understandable why uh, that sentiment is out there, because people are struggling. And people, in the case of, uh, in the case of how they're dealing with these high gas, gas prices, uh, are suffering. So that's, uh, we, we are fully aware of that, and that's why this president, uh, I think you will see, um, will continue his focus on growing the economy, creating jobs, on, on working with Congress to pass legislation that does that, working with Congress to take measures that reduce our deficit, uh, that invest in uh, those areas that allow us to grow, allow us to compete, uh, make sure that we educate our kids so we can be competitive in the 21st century. He doesn't, I mean, the remarkable thing to me at watching being on the inside now is they've, they've, you always hear this, right, is that the train never stops, the speed, the, the rapidity of of uh, events and, and the demands are so great. And what, what you know, we've seen in these historic times since uh, the president came into office is that that, is, that has been the case uh, and then some. And uh, his focus on the economy has not wavered, even as he has dealt very quietly uh, with only a select number of people with this mission in its, uh, f from its inception to its execution. And he, that focus will continue. It's, uh, uh, there's no, you know, the, the two things that he thinks about the most are the security of the American people and the economic security of the American people and, and at the same time. And so that's, uh, the economy uh, continues to be a, a major priority. Yes, yeah, we're hearing more and more lawmakers are seeing the Bin Laden photo or photos. Um, to be clear, are they just being shown the photos or are there copies floating around the hill? 
Uh, I'm not aware of uh, any photos being floating or being shown. Um, Bin Laden, uh, Sunday when the raid happened, was there any opportunity for U.S. officials to question him before he was shot? Again, I'm not going to get into operational details about any beyond what we've done. I mean, what I've said in the past uh, uh, yesterday is, uh, is is what I would say today. So, um, you know, what happened on Sunday night is that uh, an incredibly courageous team of U.S. personnel uh, entered a foreign country in darkness on an incredibly risky mission. Uh, executed it with at, at great risk to their own personal safety. Uh, with uh, executed that mission with great professionalism, uh, and accomplished a goal that this country had sought for nine and a half years, um, a, a, in a mission that uh, dramatically minimized collateral damage and uh, civilian casualties. Uh, that was pulled off without any uh, casualties among American personnel. And it resulted in the bringing to justice of Osama bin Laden. Uh, we have m enormous regard for uh, what was accomplished on Sunday by those men. Oh, they're American heroes. I just didn't know if they got a question. Again, I, I would just refer for uh, those questions to the Defense Department. Last nice question, real fast. Uh, any attempt by American officials to interview, question bin Laden's wife, who was there at the scene? Uh, I, not that I'm uh, aware of, but uh, you, you might uh, ask the State Department that. Yeah. Uh, are there any U.S. officials involved in the questioning of anybody else at that compound? I think I mean that that goes to that. I think what Mike just asked, and I I, I don't have an answer. Uh, so we obviously cooperate uh, and have a uh, an important relationship with Pakistan and with the Pakistani government, uh, but I don't have any. Information uh, with which to answer that question. Are they, are they sending briefings of their again? I don't. I, I just don't know. So uh, I, I don't have an answer. Is there going to be an updated narrative on what you read yesterday? I think I, I you know, I made pretty clear that we uh, have provided a great deal of information and have made an effort to get that information to you very quickly. Uh, the the nature of this operation. Uh, ha and the, and the rapidity with which we tried to respond to the desire for understandable desire for information about it has, you know, meant that we uh, needed to clarify some facts. Uh, but we I don't have any more operational details Are you for done you. Clarifying? Well, this I don't have any. I don't have any. I don't have any more operational details for you. And is it final? Will we have any? I, again, you know, the I don't draw any lines like that. It would be foolish to. But I don't. You know, we don't have any information for you today. Uh, I think we've provided a great deal of information for you about that operation. The, uh, our focus, and I think most people's focus, is on uh, the remarkable nature of what was accomplished, the fact that it was done uh, with uh, no American casualties and uh, very limited uh, collateral damage, and, uh, and done in a way that we could be entirely sure that Osama bin Laden had been brought to justice. Okay. Well, right. I want to follow up, actually, one more on the, uh, on the issue of 9-11 of uh, families. Given that many members of Congress are being shown this photo, uh, if they asked to see the photo un under some circumstance that would not be public, but for them, if, if they asked for that opportunity, would the administration be open to giving I, them that opportunity? I don't, I don't have an answer to that right now. Um, let me get a chair. Yeah. I spoke on, I believe it was Monday, with the chairman of the 9-11 Commission. He said one of the glaring recommendations that hasn't been implemented yet is giving uh, or freeing up radio spectrum for first responders. Where where does the administration stand on that? So uh, first responders can communicate amongst each other. I'll have to take that question. Yeah, I just don't know. I know you answered this, but can you clarify, did you say so no no visual evidence at all is going to be released, including video or anything like that? That's nature? correct. Okay. I mean, visual record of uh, Osama bin Laden's uh, death or, or his, his uh, deceased body. And then just, yeah. just one on a different topic, if you don't mind. Do we, do you, does the administration have any expectations, or what expectations, excuse me, does the administration have for the meeting tomorrow that Biden is hosting with? 
congressional leaders? Uh, look, I think uh, this is the beginning of an important process. The President, uh, by appointing a the Simpson Bowles Commission, by uh, putting forward the plan he did at uh, George Washington University for uh, his vision for reducing our deficit while in a balanced way, while investing in uh, the essential priorities of government to allow us to grow and allow uh, us to create jobs. Uh, he, he is now taking this step to move this process forward because he believes that, uh, you know, we're at an important point here where um, Republicans and Democrats alike share uh, recognize the problem, that's important, and they agree that it exists. They uh, share the same uh, end goal, which is $4 trillion in deficit reduction, and they share the same general uh, idea of what the timeline should be, 10 to 12 years. Uh, this creates the potential for a bipartisan compromise uh, on, on some of this, at least, and, and that's what this process, we hope, will launch on Thursday, uh, and so we, uh, I don't want to, uh, there will be no uh, announcement after that meeting that a deal has been reached, because this is a process, but, uh, I, you know, we expect progress to be made. Yes, Karen. Um, I'm just wondering, just trying to get some clarity here, why did the narrative released yesterday not mention Ahmad's son? Was he killed in the raid? You're, I, I just, uh, you know, this is the, the, the kind of thing that I'm, I'm trying not to, to, first of all, uh, go beyond what I said yesterday, and secondly, uh, to uh, what, I, what I would just say is that for, for questions like that, I, I referred you to the Defense Department, and uh, uh, and and you, they may be able to ha get an answer for you. Because John Brennan on Monday gave one name. And okay, I, I think this has been made clear. This is an important point. The the the, the transcript he gave a name. It is the correct name. Unfortunately, when it, the the transcript was. Um, listened to and put on paper, uh, an error was made in transcribing that name. Uh, 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 John Brennan's, uh, we, I think we've corrected that and, and, and what he said was accurate. And, and was any other person, dead or alive, taken from the compound and transported from the scene by no. U.S. personnel? Okay, and then on tomorrow, um, is there a does the President have concern about possibly exploiting 9-11 families? Does he want to keep some of this private? What can we expect? He's meeting in private with 9-11 families. Well, I mean, is there any, any in public? In private. Okay. So no press. Okay. So what are what are the public events then tomorrow? He's going to the World Trade Center site the, uh, and laying a wreath in public. I mean, that'll why, be... Why did he decide to, to make these meetings all private? Well, I, I think you said so in your question. I mean, you suggested why that would be the case. It's about... He wants uh, to meet with them and, and, and share with them uh, this important and significant moment, a bittersweet moment, I think, for many, uh, for many families of, uh, of the victims. And, uh, and he thinks it's appropriate to do that in private. Yeah. Why did he want to invite President Bush, and what is lost by President Bush not being there? President Obama wanted to invite and did invite President Bush because, uh, as he's made clear on Sunday night and we've made clear, that this is a moment of, uh, of unity for Americans and, and uh, a moment to recall the unity that existed in this country in the wake of the attacks on 9-11. And uh, he wanted to, uh, he, he invited President Bush because he, he had hoped that if President Bush were able to come that he would, uh, he would join. Uh, the president in visiting the, nine, uh, the, the World Trade Center site. He, we completely understand that he's not able to come, uh, but that the, the invitation was uh, made in that spirit. And to follow on Ben's question earlier, when CIA Director Panetta spoke both to NBC and to lawmakers on the Hill, he was pretty clear that it was a question of when, not if, the photos would be released. So was he misinformed or was he overruled? What are the a, a, decision, a, a final decision had not been made. So he spoke out of, out of line? Out of time? The, the president made a decision. It was, there were obviously uh, arguments to be made on each side of this, and, and, but the final decision was not made until today. So he was wrong? The final decision was not made until today. What time? This morning. I don't, have a, I don't remember precisely. I didn't look at my watch. You were with him when he made the decision? Yes. Can I clarify just one thing? When you talked about the president's role uh, tomorrow in New York, 
Are you ruling out that he'll make some comments, perhaps even in informal ones? There's no plan for him to speak uh, at the wreath laying ceremony. His events with the families and first responders are in private. I, I, you know, I don't, uh, as was the case the other day when he didn't speak at the cabinet meeting, I obviously don't, uh, uh, he's not a robot and I, I you know, he may, he, he, he could potentially speak at some point tomorrow, but, but there are no plans for that. Yes. Um, thanks, Jay. The, uh, has the president spoken to anyone on the team that carried out the mission? Uh, I don't have any information for you on that at this point. Do you know if anyone in the White House has, uh, Mr. Brennan? Uh, well, it depends. I mean, the team is a big, it's not just the, the those uh, men who went into Pakistan. There's a obviously bigger network that's, uh, uh, that represents the team, uh, the operation team, and I, I just, uh, I'm not sure. I mean, there is the, the head of uh, special Forces, who uh, obviously um, has uh, spoken to uh, members of the administration, and he's very much part of the team. So I, I don't have any information about more contact. Yes? Um, the UN's top uh, human rights official said yesterday that uh, she hoped the administration would release full details about the operation in order to settle any questions about whether it was legally justifiable. Does the administration feel or have any plans that it, that it needs to say anything more about how the operation was carried out, the rules of engagement to justify the action that happened on the Well, let me, let, me, let me address that question and I'll, forgive me, I'm going to read so I'm very pre precise here. Uh, the team had the authority to kill Osama bin Laden unless he offered to surrender, <coughs> in which case the team was required to accept his surrender if the team could do so safely. The operation was conducted in a manner fully consistent with the laws of war. The operation was planned so that the team was prepared and had the means to take bin Laden into, cu into custody. There is simply no question that this operation was lawful. Bin Laden was the head of Al-Qaeda, the organization that conducted the attacks of September 11, 2001, and Al-Qaeda and bin Laden himself had continued to plot attacks against the United States. We acted in the nation's self-defense. The operation was conducted in a way designed to minimize and avoid altogether, if possible, civilian casualties. And if I might add, uh, that was done at great risk to Americans. Furthermore, consistent with the laws of war, bin Laden's surrender would have been accepted if feasible. That's my response. Yes. Uh, two questions. Thanks, Jay. Uh, one, uh, what President Obama did on Sunday, he became a hero around the globe because it became a relief to the millions of people, including in India. India was the victim for the last 20 <coughs> years of his terrorism. Also, um, my question is when President spoke with President Jazari, or what is the reaction from Pakistan uh, as far as and other leaders that he has spoken? Uh, what are they saying now inside Pakistan? Well, I think I don't want to speak for the Pakistani government, and I think in terms of our analysis of the reaction within Pakistan, I'd, I'd, I'd point you to the State Department. The President of Pakistan obviously wrote an op-ed uh, the other day. Uh, I think you can glean some information from that. And in terms of other leaders, uh, the, the President did speak with a number of leaders from around the world, and, and they all uh, congratulated the United States on, on uh, this accomplishment, uh, bringing to justice uh, Osama bin Laden. Uh, but I don't have any other characterization to give you. Why I ask that, that for the last 10 years, this is what I've been saying here in the White House and the State Department and Pentagon, that uh, Obama is living and protected by the Pakistani intelligence and the military and living like a Maharaja. And you can see on Sunday what he yourself, the whole world saw how he, his lifestyle was there inside Pakistan. So don't you think now Pakistan has to, uh, so many questions have to answer to the international community and to the United States and also millions what, of people that he has killed? Uh, what John Brennan said and what I'll repeat is that we obviously uh, are interested in finding out uh, the details of the support network that obviously helped uh, Mr. bin Laden uh, hide uh, in Abbottabad. Uh, we don't know the members of that support network. We also note that the Pakistani government has uh, launched an investigation of its own, and we think that's a good thing. And we will work uh, uh, to find out as much as we can about uh, how that happened. I would then further state 
that our relationship with Pakistan, while complicated, is very important. And it is very important uh, precisely because uh, of our need to continue the fight against al-Qaeda, to continue the fight against terrorists. The fight is not done. And uh, we look forward to cooperating with Pakistan in the future. As, uh, as others have said, more terrorists have been killed on Pakistani soil than probably any other country. And uh, the cooperation we've received from Pakistan has been uh, very useful in that regard. Uh, second, if I may. Uh, I think that's you. third, but okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, what President said Sunday was good that it, uh, war is not against Islam or for the Muslims. But my question is that uh, in order to bring Muslim community, including in the U.S., because they are saying that they are being targeted, and uh, Congressman John, uh, King's also hearings on Muslims. Don't you think there is a now time for President to speak uh, globally to the Muslim people that uh, what? <coughs> I don't have any announcements for other speeches. I'll let the President's statement on Sunday stand for itself. Yes. Yeah, How are you? Can you clarify, has the President indicated to you in any way that he wants you to stop giving out any clarifications or information? No. Or that he wants DOD to stop because you're directing us in that sphere? I, my point is simply, this is just to make the point that we provided a great number of details. Uh, I don't have any new details for you to provide. Uh, and there are issues here. I mean, a lot of you people understand, a lot of the reporters here have covered and written about or, or uh, done pieces on uh, special operations and the kinds of uh, operations that we're talking about here, and there, there are equities we need to protect. In terms, uh, you know, it would be uh, extremely foolhardy for us to divulge information in the recounting of what happened on Sunday that would in some way, in any way, limit our capacity to perform a similar operation in the future. Uh, we're not done uh, going after terrorists. Uh, would that we were, but we're not. And so are, you are, you suggesting, are you suggesting that to answer Tim's question or any of these questions today would harm national security compared to the details that you're giving out for the last two days? Is I, that I think saying? that we have given out a great number of details. I don't have any more details for you. You're, you can certainly ask the Defense Department for more details, but I think the, over, the point here is that uh, we've divulged an extraordinary amount of information about this operation. And we don't want to divulge any information that would impede our capacity to launch a similar operation uh, in the future. And uh, I think that's entirely reasonable. I think, uh, again, the, the level of uh, detail and the amount of information has been rather extraordinary. Uh, and and there, there has to be, and we did. And there has so to can be. Can we keep doing that? Well, no. I mean, you can ask, but the point is, is that, that I don't have any clarifications for you. I, that what I said yesterday st stands, and, and you know I clarified uh, a couple of points. Uh, and uh, you know the problem is is that if we if we in not me if we engage in uh, in this kind of thing, it leads to those areas that uh, unwittingly could have the divulsion of information that would limit our capacity to uh, do this kind of operation in the future, and that would be a, a grave error. On something that you said we might be able to get. On the Vincent, was there a pathologist who would have made a written <coughs> record of the body? I don't have and any. And would there have been I a don't have any information a for you on that. There's always a written <coughs> naval record of a burial at sea. Can we that get may be possible, copy? but I'm not making that promise. What I'm the point out the, the the question I was addressing, the question the president addressed, was right. photographs and video. Right. Uh, right. You know, in terms of and the and the decision not to release that is related to the image images and the, the potential uh, harm that could cause by releasing ask? those. Uh, of course, ask? I'll, uh, yeah, and, and I will ask. But again, there is no point in uh, you know, trying to tease out all these details about an operation that we've provided a great number of details on and which, uh, again, is uh, the kind of operation that uh, elements of which need to be protected for obvious reasons. Okay. Yep. Can you say with um, with certainty that uh, Bin Laden's hideout would have been found without the enhanced interrogation techniques that were done under the Bush administration? I can say with certainty that no single piece of information, with the exception of the address of the compound, was vital uh, to this, was singularly vital to this, because we're talking about tiny bits of information that were compiled by unbelievably competent professionals over nine and a half years. And uh, it's impossible to know 
if one piece of information came from one source uh, and was corroborated in another way, if uh, you know which which thread held the cloth together, with the exception of the location of the compound, and I would simply note that that has not been only been in existence for five or six years. So, my, can I just finish answering his question? That'd be great. Um, the uh, the fact is is that information was uh, gathered from detainees. We have multiple ways of gathering information uh, from detainees, from different methods that we have of getting information. The, the work that was done that, it, that it, to put the case together was done primarily by analysts gathering tiny bits of information and putting it together and, and creating a body of work, if you will, that led to uh, the finding of the location where Osama bin Laden was hiding. Uh, it sounds to me at the very least like you're, what you're saying is that the uh, interrogation techniques cannot be ruled out as a critical and necessary piece to have found bin Laden. Is that correct? It's I'm possible sa I'm that I'm saying that, is that there is no single piece of information uh, beyond the location of the compound where Osama bin Laden was hiding out that was incontrovertibly critical to the, the success of this operation on Sunday. Now, I can't categorically rule out that one piece of information, because we don't know, that you're, we're missing the sort of bigger picture here, which is that the incredibly hard and focused work of our intelligence committee, community, intelligence professionals who, who don't get credit because they're so often, you know, we can't name them and identify them and stand them up and, and, and celebrate them, uh, led to this success. Uh, and then joint intel, IC, uh, military cooperation <laughs> led to the remarkably successful mission on Sunday. Uh, and that, I think, is uh, a testament to the, um, the focused determination of the American people to do what we said we would do uh, after 9-11 and right up to Sunday, which is we were going to bring Osama bin Laden to justice. And we would keep looking for him, and we would find him and bring him to justice, and that's what we did. Well, yes, Christy. At point, you used, the president used that in the, in the transcript that you read from at the top of the briefing, uh, that Osama bin Laden, bin Laden had received justice. Is that what the SEALs went in to do, was deliver justice, or did they go in to take him into custody so he could be tried? I, I, I just went through a whole litany of, of what their what their assignment right, was. It seems like an important message, though. I mean, this is yes, how we it's absolutely, being perceived around and, and the world. You can, and, and if he had surrendered and, and we could have uh, uh, done that, uh, brought him into custody safely, uh, then that would have been bringing him to justice as well. But he was brought to justice on Sunday. And I don't think... Uh, uh, I think it's entirely appropriate that, given the circumstances that he uh, was brought to justice in the way he was, the, 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 the professionals on the ground made, uh, uh, you know, put themselves at great risk and, and accomplished their mission. Yes. Um, you just said that uh, we are not done going after terrorists. Um, the Pakistani government said in a statement um, that Sunday's raid was an unauthorized unilateral action. So how does that statement how would that statement sort of affect any future special operations that might take place for another uh, person believed to be, you know, involved with Al Qaeda? Uh, we have a complicated but vital and important relationship with Pakistan. We don't agree on everything, but their cooperation has been essential in the fight against Al Qaeda, and we continue to work on that relationship and seek that cooperation and receive it. And uh, we will continue to seek and find and bring to justice uh, terrorists who are plotting to, to do harm to Americans and our allies. So would you use the same method, the same methods that we use on Sunday? Even after uh, well, I, I, you're, you're, it's a hypothetical, but certainly that method uh, was very effective and, and, and was entirely lawful. And uh, uh, well, as I said before, I, I certainly wouldn't want to preclude the use of that method by any uh, uh, by anything I might say from here. Subject, Jay. Yes, Giles. Uh, in his meeting with the Prince of Wales this afternoon, will the President express <coughs> any interest in meeting uh, Prince William and Kate Middleton on his visit to the UK? I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. 
Uh, he well, might. He said I, yesterday that he would congratulate. I'm sure he will congratulate uh, uh, Prince Charles, but I, I beyond that, I'm, I, I just can't predict. Stephen. So just for that question there, are you saying that the U.S. reserves the right to, as the President said back in the campaign, if Pakistan will not act against terror suspects to go and infiltrate Pakistani territory and act against them? Yes. He made very clear during the campaign that that was his view. He was criticized for it. Uh, he maintained uh, that that was his view. And by the actions he has taken as president, uh, feels that uh, it was the, uh, the right approach and continues to feel that way. Why is the president concerned about incitement yeah, from the photographs if indeed uh, bin Laden was in fact the, the Charles Manson of the Muslim world? If you paint him as not a Muslim, you describe him as an extremist. I say he wasn't a Muslim leader. And you, and you say, yet the showing of his dead body will incite by. We have no need to, 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 to publish those photographs to establish that Osama bin Laden was killed, and it is not, uh, in the President's view, uh, necessary or prudent to do that because of the possible uh, inflammatory nature of those photographs. Why is it inflammatory? If, if he is not I, there is a long leader. history of images like that being used uh, to um, rally opinion uh, against people, to turn uh, uh, the, the people in those photographs into heroes, and uh, you know, we're not interested in doing that. And we're also, as Americans, not interested, as the President said, in trotting around photographs as trophies. That's not who we are, and so we won't do it. Some Muslims have told me they would like to see the photographs. Well, because that's not who we are. It would show the I think I've answered dead. the question. Yes. Uh, regarding the historical agreement between Hamas and Fatah today, in Egypt, in Egypt today, Prime Minister Netanyahu called this a blow, a, a blow to peace and great victory for terrorism. What's the President's view on this statement? Do you agree with Netanyahu? You know, we understand that Fatah and Hamas have reached a reconciliation agreement. Uh, what is important now is that Palestinians ensure implement implementation of that agreement, uh, that its implementation advances the prospects of peace rather than undermines those prospects. Uh, you know, we're continuing to seek details, more information about the nature of the agreement, and we're consulting with the parties uh, about these very issues. And uh, I refer you uh, to the Palestinians for details on the agreement because we're still seeking them ourselves. But many people think that without solving Palestine issue, terrorist activities will not disappear in that region. Do you agree? We, we certainly agree that it's imperative for the parties involved to sit down and negotiate a lasting peace. And the President has made that clear and he continues to believe that's necessary. Toshi. Thank you. Just another different topic on, on electronics company Sony. Sony's network was attacked by, by authorized uh, outsiders and uh, they were the more, more than 100 million people's information has been taken to the, to the outsiders. Congress has, been, has started to criticize them. There was a hearing today, and Sony didn't understand. What's the view on the situation by the administration? I'm afraid I, I just, I'm not uh, aware of uh, the details of that, and I don't have an administration view for you. But I'm happy to, if you take that question, you, you get back to me. Uh, I'll take one more, yes. Yeah, and to follow up on the Middle East, does the President think it's a good time now to start an initiative on the peace process? The President has believed since he took office that it's important to uh, move forward with the peace process. Uh, uh, no time like the present. Thank you.